Welcome back to Humankind. In today's video we're going to be discussing Humankind's October progress update and sort of the future roadmap for Humankind's development. The information in this video has largely come from a Games Together update provided by Amplitude Studios, the development team behind Humankind, officially this morning on their forums and some information they've shared on social media. This is all legitimate information and I will not be extracting anything out from it other than the truth. Let's jump straight into the October October update and I'm happy to confirm that we do have a release date. It will be a quote big update on October the 28th. So not long to go now until this update comes out. What should we expect to be included in it? Well, let me give you a direct quote. This patch will improve your options when creating your game with new settings for resource abundance and end conditions. Those are two big announcements. Sounds like we're going to be able to change how many luxuries and so on spawn on our map and how the game will end. To try to address, quote, the rapid increase in the game's pace in the mid to late game discussed by the community as well as some of the most discussed concerns about balance between cultures among other things. And when someone probed them a little bit further in the uh, comments on the blog post, uh, they went on to say that they'll be looking at things in particular like late game pacing, balance between cultures, and some combat balance as well. I think this is some great news for the October 28th update. I'm really excited that we're going to be getting settings to change how we create the game. That's really fundamental, I think, to having a more custom experience. Do you want maximum luxuries? Do you want no luxuries but maximum strategic resources? How do you want the game to end? Do you want pollution to be a game ending condition or not, for example? Sounds like we're getting some great customization. I'm very much excited for the confirmed October 28th update. Now let's move into the second, more substantive part of this video now that I've given you the juicy detail up front. By the way, if you appreciate me not leaving you hanging on tender hooks, I would appreciate a like or subscribe rating on this video anyway. Let's jump through and talk now about the roadmap for humankind. So in their blog post, they separated out two different things and there was a strong undertone throughout that I'll get to in a minute but basically they separated it into ongoing work things maybe related to this patch uh, related to performance on other systems like humankind on mac for example and then they talked about future features those more substantive overhauls that we would expect to come uh, much later in a game's uh, post-release development, and that is indeed the undertone of this blog post. Here's what we're doing now, and here are the more substantive things that we need some more time on because they're pretty deeply complex. First and foremost, let's talk about ongoing work. That was the sort of first section in this roadmap for humankind. Uh, in the ongoing work section, and I would like to quote, they've been following some, quote, fascinating conversations about a variety of topics. And now we get some teasers. I'll continue with the quote here. Quote, from Neolithic population growth to end conditions, culture balance and affinities, there's a crucial one, to overall game pace. They go on to mention, quote, line of sight and unit balance, religion, and even improved quality of life for personas and the new game lobby, among other things. Okay, these are the specific things that they mention for ongoing work in terms of future changes and balances to the game. However, they go on to talk more about system performance as well. Uh, they go on to say uh, specifically really about Mac uh, we've already fixed uh, many crashes and stuck turns. Yes, we've seen that across platforms, but there are still major concerns that are among their other top priorities, including the map version of Humankind, multiplayer stability, that's a big one for me, I'm quite interested in that, and reports of crashes and turns not ending properly. These appear to still be happening now and again, but not as prevalently as they were initially, at least that's my experience. Uh, they go on to say that these issues have a wide variety of potential causes, they need to tackle one at a time, and multiplayer connection issues can involve a variety of uh, variables, making it harder to test. Basically, these issues have proven more difficult to address than they anticipated, and as such, it has slowed down how they can address them. 
they issue uh, an apology. They say, we'd like to apologize to fans for the Mac delay. And I respect that. It's nice to be upfront. I, I do respect that. Uh, they say, while we've made good progress on the Mac version, the M1 compatible version has proven to be more difficult. And unfortunately, they did not have access to sufficient information or hardware in advance. So they couldn't start work on a compatibility version of Humankind with Mac M1 before release. They go on to say that they're sorry about the long delay. Uh, they're currently finishing their examination and hope to provide more details next week. In the meantime, however, if you are a Mac user, uh, you can use the Mac beta version on Steam if you opt in through the properties of Humankind on Steam. They go on to say they hope to address it as soon as possible, but can't give an estimation of when it's fixed. So it sounds like the Mac issue may not be included in the next update, but something they're still working on. Speaking of still working on, I think that brings us through a, a nice transition into the final part of this video. What is the future work program for humankind? What does the roadmap look like? We've been provided some more information on that this morning, actually. The developers say that they don't just want to review what they've done since the release, and we can talk about that a little bit at the very end of the video. They want to instead look toward the future as well. Here's a quote. We know many of you would like us to expand certain parts of the game, like religion, diplomacy, cultural influence, and pollution, with more options for the player and stronger interactions with other game systems, end quote. I agree with that, and broadly those are the systems that we've talked about here on the channel during my Humankind live streams and in the discussion about these videos, in the comments section of these videos. Uh, they go on to say, I quote, while we agree that many parts of the game could be expanded, <laughs> these are substantial changes and additions that require careful consideration and time to implement. End quote. Totally fair. Seems totally fair to me. Uh, quote, we are working on various improvements we think you'll be excited about. I'm sure I will. <laughs> uh, they go on to say, but we are not ready to share details about them yet. Additionally, rest assured, we're keeping a close eye on your discussions, hopefully like these ones here, to take into account where and how you would like to see the game grow. And I'm going to have a video coming out about that in future. So if you'd like to add any comments or feedback, anything for me to think about, please do comment it below. I'll be going through uh, with a fine tooth comb the comment section of this video and really making sure that I read and understand every single one of them. And that brings us to the end. And I think a good point to end this video is actually to consider where we started because on their social platform when they provided uh, the update on Twitter they also provided a nice snapshot of what's been done and I thought this was important to note I think it says a lot about their priorities a lot about the feedback that we gave as a community and a lot about the scalability of what's fixable and what isn't and how long it takes to fix things or expand things should I say so far in Humankind's development and what they've done historically, they've increased the number of available late game resources. If you remember at launch, it was very hard to get nukes. It's still difficult, but not impossible. And we're going to be able to customize that more in future, which is wonderful. They've also raised the pollution limit and added more ways to reduce it. And that was really effective. Pollution does not end my games anymore, but it could still. It's still a threat, but it's not ever present. They've also improved naval assaults on cities, absolutely, uh, because it didn't work, now it does. They've started work on improving the UI. I actually don't really have too many issues with the UI, to be perfectly honest. I actually really like the UI, but go them for improving that. Uh, and improve the map editor validation. I think there might be some more work to be done on that, but I'm not a big map creator. However, some of you, like Shabals and others, have made custom maps that I do really enjoy playing. Anyway, that does conclude this video. Please do leave your feedback uh, below for me. I will be going through all of that when I think about planning out my next video. A more substantive piece on the features of humankind that I would like to see adjusted and how I'd like to see those significant features changed over time through DLC for humankind, for patch updates, so on and so forth. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, and bye-bye.